Every week, I go to a club. I act like I'm too drunk to stand. And every week, a nice guy comes over to see if I'm okay. You okay? You are so pretty. I am a nice guy. Are you? Welcome to Shot Talk. Look at this, with Promising Young Woman. And we're so lucky to have both the DP, Benjamin Cratchun, and the director, Emerald Fennell. I mean, this movie, by the way, is fantastic. I've watched it multiple times. It does this incredible dance in like a razor thin line of tone. And it's a thriller and it's funny in a very dark way, which I like. And it's been getting like an amazing amount of attention as it well deserves. Emerald wrote it, produced it, directed it. Benjamin, of course, shot it beautifully. The movie's four nominations for Golden Globes, three Ooh. Independent Spirit Award nominations. The center of it is an incredible performance by Carrie Mulligan. So go see it if you haven't seen it. This will give you a little insight into the making of it. And really, we just want to go kind of filmmaker to filmmaker, DP to DP. Let's just talk a little bit about how it was made and some of the inspirations behind the look of it and jump in. Okay, this is the opening of the movie. This crazy remix of uh, Boys, which is like very poppy. And I just want to know a little bit about why this opening of these sort of doughy guys in like khakis and dress shirts, belts tucked in, nerdy. I feel like if I was on set, you would have asked me to uh, to be one of these guys in this scene. <laughs> and I just, I, I was mesmerized by how people start movies. And I just want to know a little bit about why this shot and how you got started. It's tricky, isn't it? The opening shot of a movie because it needs to tell people, it just needs to tell you everything. It needs to tell you what you're about to experience or, or at least lie to you about what that might be. And so it felt like, I mean, firstly, Charlie XCX's boys, the lyrics, the first words you hear in this film are her song and the lyrics that I was busy thinking about boys. And I was, so, you know, um, <laughs> And it just felt like the perfect opportunity we needed to, the, the opening of this movie is in a kind of provincial, bleak nightclub that no one would like elect to go to unless they were too drunk to kind of, you know, know better. And it just, it was just trying to kind of get that sense of, you know, a group of men like drunk, sweaty, and then just, yeah, shooting them the way that we're always used to seeing women shot. That's right, well, there you go. That yeah. I think is precisely it. It's like decapitated men's bodies, albeit yeah. not sexy ones, but just grinding away at a song, kind of all together, not even with women. But I'll tell you the way I look at the opening five minutes of a movie and as like a filmmaker and as an audience member, I feel like it's, it's like you're driving in a car as a passenger and the director is driving the car. And you basically have three or four minutes before they realize, you know how to drive a car, I can relax and just look at the scenery, or they're gonna spend the next hour and a half going, why'd you turn left there? It's faster to go this way. You're going the wrong, like it, they basically, if you don't do something in two minutes to get them sort of, that they're in the confident arms of a good driver, then you you sort of are, are running up, you know, you're sort of, struggling against all these obstacles because they basically challenge every decision you make after. And I thought I was on board from this decision. This decision <laughs> was so specific that I suddenly made that decision that like, I'm in the hands of a filmmaker and, and, and now I can relax and whatever she's gonna do, uh, I'm on board. I mean, it was incredibly fun. And I also think it's just, the thing is about it is filming, filming anyone like that is ridiculous. You know, filming women, how sexy they are, is really ridiculous. So, I mean, it's it's kind of a funny thing. And it was a day. It was a day, wasn't it? It was a day. We watched watched lots of 90s rap videos for that one. Lots of, like, you know, grinding. And then we just filmed the guys exactly the same way, I think. This is a practical location? Yeah. yeah. You shot in Los Angeles? Yeah. We shot in Los Globos nightclub. Is it this is this is same nightclub? Same nightclub, yeah. When you went scouting, tell me a little bit about first Ben, tell me a little bit about 
just some of the conversations during prep, I want to just hear a little bit about the process from the time you met Emerald, the conversations you had about all kinds of things, look and otherwise, but also the process of what prep is like, because I looked at this shot here that's up, which is the first time we meet Carrie Mullins Carrie, and I thought, well, that's a great practical location because that couch alone would make me go, we're in the right place. I was a little bit freaked out by that. All right, tell me why. I mean, first of all, we were looking for a club and we had to, I think, make it three clubs at the time. So what you see in the beginning and the opening, that's the downstairs and this is the upstairs. And the reason not, I mean, this is perfect. I, I actually have an image of Emerald seated exactly like this, as she called it, the bonquette over there. And it was like, it's an amazing image. And then um, you were like, this is this is where she'll sit. No, I started to sort of get nervous because the ceiling, I don't know if you can quite tell because we shot anamorphic, but the ceiling is literally just above those uh, mirrors there. And I don't know, if you know if you're lighting a club scene and you want to try and get something in there, you're going to be trying to rig things. And we were going to shoot wide. So I was like, oh my God, there's mirrors, the ceiling's low and we're here. Did you tell her you were concerned or did you hide it? Yeah, yeah. I, saw, I mean, I met, I think I did, but it was also, yeah, you, oh, Emerald can speak maybe more than that. Did I, what did <laughs> do I say you know, at that point? I think Emerald you know? probably looked at my face. You looked at my face and you probably could tell. And then I was like, I, I hope that we were quite honest with each other. I think it was always a kind of give and take because poor Ben was dealing with just a sort of maniac. You know, when I, when I walk into that room, I'm like, well, look at that shiny red leather. It's perfect, it, you know, it's kind of cheesy and sort of lascivious and gross and sticky. And she can, you know, this is the kind of like, a lot of it was sort of like biblical references and sort of crucifixion poses and things. And this is, it's it's both powerful and vulnerable. It's that sort of stuff. So that's what I see. <laughs> I look at Ben and he's like, I'm going to kill myself. This is, and of course, of course, it's it's always that combination, isn't it? Because he was completely right on the day. It was just such a pain. It was a huge pain, that room, because as you can see, like the mirrors, not only is it mirrors everywhere, but they're all slightly slanted. So you get, yes. there was no mirror that we weren't in at some point. It was just, a, it was a nightmare. But I think the thing is, is that that was what was so wonderful was that we sort of managed always to make it work. And I think there were a couple of times when it was just like, no, it's not possible. Yeah. yeah and that really meant something because Ben would always make it work if he could, even if it was a nightmare. And we focus. It did focus us in, and I did. I was sold because I do this next image that I think is coming up. Is that her going down the stairs? I think that was like I love that part of Lost Global, the exit. Yeah. No, but it's not. were those flows in Lost so, Global, or did you add those? They they had a set, but we changed. I think we put these ones in for this color because I have. I was looking through my images, and uh, so we put like an LED strip down there. But it's like. And we did that lovely sort of like uh, pull out. Well, it's funny because one of the reasons I picked this image was because of its effectiveness as an audience member. Because I was watching, I watched this movie with my wife, and it was on this shot. Of course, you're sort of steadying yourself as this very, very drunk woman is getting picked up, and you can see the. It's a, it's a basically a slow burn of like, ugh. And she, on this image, something about walking down these stairs, she finally spoke. She, I think she was like frozen. And then she's like, oh my God, I, I've been there. Like that thing, it was such a, an emotionally sort of like present sort of shot for her of just, and the dread of like a man leading a woman out, like away from camera. Yeah, yeah. And, and it just is that like always going down, isn't it? It's just that kind of nightmarish kind of labyrinthine thing. And I think Ben, it was Ben's idea to sort of pull back so that we had that effect of like, she, they were leaving. She was leaving, yeah. kind of leaving safety. And you know, Glenn, it's just like, this isn't really the format for it, but it's just Carrie's acting in this is so good. Oh yeah, it's perfect. That's fucking scary. I don't know if we're allowed to swear, I'm so sorry. Sure you are, oh, as much as you like. <laughs> It's post watershed where I am, but um, walking down, as any drunk woman will know, walking down a set of stairs that narrow and sharp in heels is really scary. And Carrie just always committed to that stuff. So you can feel her, you know, in the edit, you can hear the heels catching on the step. You know, the whole thing is just so, yeah, it's just, it's just, it is, it's nightmarish. It's funny, you mentioned, you know, when you see just like the preponderance of imagery, 
you mentioned two things that I thought were really interesting. One was this kind of Christian motif and the sort of like this image, which is effectively yeah. a crucifixion image, you know, the one of her presenting here. Mm -hmm. And there are other images that really follow Christian thing. Tell me about those kind of like global ideas and when they came forward in the conversations, Ben, in terms of the end, the second, the second question is pink and blue because I was obsessed with it. Obviously, this is a bit more sort of like purple and, and cyan or purple blue, but this pink and blue, when I started sort of seeing it, I was like enamored by it. It was like a baby naming come, like scene. Like we were about to like basically gender reveal somewhere in this movie, <laughs> but I loved it so much. So wait, tell me a little bit about those conversations, the color choices and the design, which obviously are tied into them, as well as some of like looking for some of this you know, Christ-like imagery. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the, I think the whole avenging angel was originally in your original, uh, when you showed me your lookbook, I think you had images in there. It was Black Narcissus, I think. Yeah, that we had all, so there was all, Andy, we might have been written in the script, so we already had that kind of idea. And I know that you, yeah, when you sat on those benches and you were like, this is her opening image, like this is how we're going to open it. And because you'd also discussed, or very early on, we discussed what is Cassie doing in these situations. And we had this idea of like it being predated, the camera almost being predatory and what she's doing is preying on these. Because the shot previous to this, we will tr we track in across the bar into the three guys. So there's almost like, and she's, it's almost like we're with them, but we're actually seeing it from her. You know what I mean? That's her setting, setting it up. Yeah, that it's she's both vulnerable and strangely powerful yeah. in this scene as well, even before the big reveal, you know. Yeah, so that that part of it, the avenging angel, the whether it's she's going to bring sort of retribution or, you know, or and also, yeah, the whole light, dark. I mean, we can get into the colors. Emerald can speak more probably about the colors. But yeah, and then just to have, because it's such a powerful first shot. But yeah, like you say, she's very drunk. And you know, Michael Perry, who's the incredible genius sort of art director, he, yeah, so, so he, he, so much of it was like finding these things that could be, as you see there, angel wings or these decals, which we could turn into halos, or even, I think we discussed this maybe before, but in the restaurant with Madison, where Cassie's sitting, there are these kind of unusual light fixtures. When there's a shot when she puts down the bill and we kind of shoot sort of lower and you see that above her one of these weird kind of space discs so the one behind her is red and so in the shot she's got this kind of like floating red halo so it was a kind of coming together of everyone like what's so wonderful is like sort of I would come in and say like oh I think it needs to have this sort of biblical you know it needs to feel like an allegory it needs to feel like she's an avenging angel and then Ben will, you know, come up with some sort of beautiful. Sort of yeah, we hit that. We hit that one with a light. So I put two. We put two lights into the one in the restaurant, you know. And Michael Perry, I think we obviously made it red, and then we hit it. Yeah, made it red, just specifically that one, so that we only see it really in two shots when it when it's above her head. That's super interesting. Well, that I think those are the type of choices that in not the first view is like effectively just this incredible thriller joyride and then to see the craftsmanship when you really break it down you know and that's the thing like this pink and blue motif when i started realizing the way you sort of map in the wardrobe and the costume design into this pink and blue and this gender thing tell me a little bit about that because she's often in pink when she's most vulnerable and sort of open at least or at least in meeting Bo's character but when she's out on the prowl, she's not in pink or blue, or maybe she's in dark blue, yeah. Well, it sort of depends as well, because it depends how you view those two, that kind of very, as you say, like the very linear gender, kind of arbitrary gender colors that we have. Because actually I would say when she's in pink, she's at her most dangerous. That's when she's herself. And, you know, she's chosen pink to disguise. She's chosen that color to hide in plain sight, to to be easy to dismiss, to be easy, you know, there's nothing to see there. 
is there? That woman is not a woman who is worth um, asking if she's okay. You're not worried about her. You're not threatened by her in any way. So there is all of this stuff. And, and also Michael Perry was really a huge part of that because he, you know, he, we were very kind of clear about the color palette. I, I really wanted, and Ben really wanted, we wanted this sort of very like soft feminine feeling. And it was Michael who said, well, let's choose where safety is. And he said like, blue is safety and kind of calm and pink and red is sort of danger. So, so then, so it ended up kind of interestingly mirroring the gender things, you know, Bo ends up wearing a lot of blue, uh, a blue t-shirt, he's in a blue t-shirt, she's in a pink. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, so it ends up, mm. it sort of becomes all sorts of things really, but it's, yeah, it's I'm a pink toothbrush, you're a blue toothbrush. Is that a song in America? That's right. That's right. No, but it's like it, it it it's it really works. But speak a little bit though to that gentleness because you know that also speaks to this quality of lighting which like this shot is one of my favorites of the of Yeah, that's the, an amazing. You know, this one of my favorite sequences. Yeah, this just just this image alone is one of the most just gentle and beautiful combination of tonalities and color. And, but that present throughout the movie. So how did you find that kind of tone? Because And what were some of the references? I mean, for this one, because going to what Emerald was talking about, that was, because I had read it also as like her half, I mean, she might be our most dangerous, but also it is kind of, I seen it as a safe space. You know, her friend works there. It's where she meets Bo. It's where like, and there was going to be, because from Michael's references, there was going to be a lot of color in there from the, cupcakes and things like that and the knee at the sign from the coffee shop so i always knew that the light was just going to be real soft and actually when we found that location it had this amazing like sort of side window which we frosted on the one side where well, we had to frost because the location sort of east la downtown which is like just hustle and bustle and craziness and like you'd probably never know but that kind of gave it, you know, that's the sort of DP dream. It gives it that sort of soft cross light. You know what I mean? If you like, we kind of table topped it and put this really nice soft light in. So actually the sequence you were talking about was probably shot at night. Was it shot at night? And then we- Well, it's it like, it's, sort of... it's kind of dusk like, yeah. right? So I think we, on that also, what was great in that shop, it had those old school shutters, which I almost used to cut it. So I used them, I pulled them down as much as possible and then obviously brought in a ton of flags. But I think it's such an important moment, this moment in the film, because that's where she hears the name Al Monroe. And it's the one where it goes into where she decides, it's sort of a key switch. It's like, this is the, mo the moment just before the gear shifts into like, I'm going to go on this mission. And actually Emerald had always said, and we had decided, I think, uh, other than that very opening sort of obscured close up, this is the first time we go close into Cassie. And that was something that Emerald had down, you know, on one of our original, original meetings. Like, let's only do, let's go really close for the first time here, which I think, what are we, 15 minutes in or 20 minutes in, you know? Like 25 minutes, 30 minutes in almost. Yeah. So it's like you have, we have certain shots, but that's definitely where we go right in. And in a way, again, the film. <laughs> You know, because I wanted to make it so beautiful that it wasn't like that was supposed to be have that, uh, which we can talk about because that comes into the night sequences, especially when they're outside at night. That kind of like fairy tale idea as well. Do you know what I mean? And to play that into the movie and that, that obviously what he's saying is really troubling Cassie here. Like it's really quite troubling. She's heard this name, you know, but what you're viewing and how you're viewing it is such a sort of, should emanate some kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like beauty in a sense, but you've got that contrast, which we're always playing, I think, and which is a large part of the film again. Yeah. Yeah. And this sort of color combination, like you, you showed me a little deck of just some of the sort of references oh, yeah. and like you do see a tonality thing, which is actually gorgeous in terms of that warmth and that cool in the same frame that are in a gentle sort of tonality. Um, that that I think you nailed in such a lovely way. And this kind of sense that the movie was shot almost with just practical lights. Was that an objective of yours? Or 
obviously in a movie that doesn't have but even if you had ultimate resources i don't think you would do anything differently probably it's really interesting i mean i, I mean ben is probably like what but actually what is amazing is that for for, for a lot of people they want to make a movie feel as much like real life as possible and that's admirable and i like and i love those movies but actually i want to see a movie that is a movie where everything is considered where every choice has meaning because that's this is the almost one of the only worlds where you can do that and it, it gives you and you don't need a huge amount of money and a huge amount of time if you've got people like ben people like mike people people like carrie dedicated and brilliant people actually you just need to plan it and you need to be specific and you you're not trying to emulate something you're not trying to emulate the world you're trying to make your own world and that's actually weirdly easier because it's it doesn't matter if it's a bit foamy or a bit arch because that's your world and i think that helped us enormously because as ben says it's so much about beauty and so much about making people feel safe whether it's people in the movie with cassie or it's the audience so does that manifest itself in like very particular shot listing or do you still have this kind of discovery period as you're making the movie with all of these kind of bigger ideas in line or is it very meticulous in the way that you guys prepped and planned and then executed the the movie day by day I mean, I would have liked more prep time. I think I even came out a little bit earlier and we went to each location and we started to, we did have maybe a couple of days where we shortlisted the movie. We didn't storyboard any of the movie because we didn't have those resources, but it was definitely like, I actually think it was like a really fruitful time for me and Em. We actually, it was the one time we switched off our phones and sort of sat together and actually we started to like think, you know, because Kind of even when you do that, I know some people don't shot list or they don't. I kind of like the shot list. I sort of love it in a way, even if I don't use it or have it in my back pocket, I just have it as like, a, it's got you thinking critically about it. And I think, of course, one of the connections when I first met Emerald was this, you know, we love cinema. We love like from an early age and like sort of like thrillers and sort of tautness that great cinema has. Do you know what I mean? And I think like, Emerald had a lot of those ideas already. So even just to get them down was like so important. Do you know what I mean? I.e. that's going to, this is going to be the first close up. This will be the first time, you know, the, 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 the computer scene, all these things. We wouldn't have had the time on the day because it was so short. It was like 23 days. So we were like, you had to prep it in a way. And I don't, I, I don't, I don't think that means that we didn't ever, we couldn't, we could explore, I think at times, but it really, it really helped that we were like, this is the movie. And actually I went back through the short list. Sorry, just, I yeah, just, just before I called, you know, cause we printed it out for the tech recce and it is quite amazing to go through it. And I'd, we'd put stills, even like from ones we'd taken or even other movies and stuff. And it is quite ama amazing how much is in there. Do you know what I mean? How much information? I mean, more time would always have been amazing because then you can be more spontaneous. And also I think for the actors particularly, it's, yeah. it's difficult being like, this is the shot guys, so just do it. <laughs> there would have been no way in God's earth we'd have made our days if we didn't have a shot list. The first time we see Cassie in that nightclub, that the first time anyone sees that, they're gonna think she's drunk and incapable and vulnerable. And then the next time they see it, they're gonna think, you know, as you were saying earlier, that she's powerful and frightening and a predator. And so that's the stuff we need to know. We need to communicate that. We need to know that there's a specific moment, there's a specific line of Madison's that we need to start pushing in because that's the moment we tighten the grip on her, you know? Because otherwise you just get into the edit and think, oh fuck, I wish I, why didn't we do this? But you know, on the day you need to kind of know, I think where you're at. I mean, maybe that's- yeah. No, I think the process of doing a page turn I always say a director doesn't, and you obviously wrote the script too, so you have the benefit of living with it in your mind long before you had a chance to direct it. But you don't have to know anything about camera. What you do, I always say, just close your eyes and pretend you're seeing the finished movie and tell me what's the first image of this scene. 
and then work your way from there. It's if you're watching something that's already completed. Mm. And from that, you effectively make a shot list and you can now go, great. That's basically what the instinct is of where the camera should be at each one of these moments. Um, I know I'm planted on this shot, but there's a shot. I just, I didn't even put it in this deck, but I'm just mesmerized by it. And it wasn't, I don't think in something that was particularly, you know, sexy per se. It wasn't like a, a male gaze kind of thing. There was something graphic and architectural about just starting this frame here and then traveling up past a ponytail or braided hair or whatever, and then finding her reading a book that I was mesmerized. Just tell me a little bit about, was that something you thought of when you were writing it? Well, we had a lot of, in our short list, we had a lot of back of head stuff. I think partly because we're so often with Cassie. She, we're kind of, you know, there's a kind of POV kind of voyeuristic element of this movie. Pre yeah, the sort of predatory thing that Ben's talking about. But here, you know, male gaze and female gaze is kind of an interesting one because I don't really know where one ends and the other begins necessarily. But I think that this is this is a very sensual scene. This scene is kind of the, the only sex scene in the movie, really. It's where she meets Ryan and she spits in his coffee and he drinks it. And so it was important that we kind of establish that kind of sexy tone. And I think the thing is, is, you know, traditionally, if you're gonna if you're gonna pan up a woman's body, you're gonna be you're gonna be hitting the classics, the, the legs, the ass, the tits. But I yeah. think you know, there's something kind of strong and powerful about the hair. It's in, intrinsically more female. It still is sexy. It's just, you know. Yeah, and the bow. The bow is like perfectly done. The hair, the flowers on the, it's like, yeah. The hair in this movie, the <laughs> hair, there's like, I, 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 I never even paid attention to like that many different looks. I literally created like a little deck of all the looks <laughs> of the hair. Because I was like, this is alone kind of mesmerizing. I'd be so pleased. But again, you know, hair, it's a it's a weapon. Yes. It's just so kind of and and I think I don't know, there's so much about Cassie's hair really that's so great. Because it's also a disguise as well. You know, she hides there's a lot of it to hide behind. Yes. Well, that's what this shot, this was the one I picked here. I just this was one of my favorite like frames in the movie, just because the sort of ha the way the hair is covering half of her face. Like she's at that moment, like, oh wait, is there something more here? Why am I at this lunch? And then suddenly it's like, I'm hiding in this little window of hair with her one eye lit. It was like just gorgeous and framed you know, beautifully. Just let me get technical for a second, Ben. This, this location, like, again, I suspect you, there were no bills, right? No, there were, it was all location, but there were sort of like, we. The, ca the cafe sort of we took over I think that's like maybe a more industrial space or whatever so builds within live locations as it were but there was no studio and so when you attack a scene like this are you bringing in a big unit soft and sort of controlled like just DP to DP so like get a little <laughs> technical for a second of like how are you attacking this this sort of scene which is you know effectively two a two shot two you know overs and yeah scenes. yeah yeah a drunk lunch, drunk lunch scene. But what was amazing about this again, because I love, I mean, first of all, the first things I try and find or trying to work out are mostly like, I love cross light. I mean, or three quarter back or cross light as a kind of key, especially in a thrillery type vibe. I know this film, I move a lot more around to the front. That's probably something that I got from working with Emerald or putting in a lot more, which I thought was and it worked beautifully on Kerry, you know what I mean? But like, this was a classic example because it had these like four windows on this side and we had this lovely white tablecloth, you know? So I was putting, I think we had like, I had heads outside each window and I was like doing a skip light off the, off the tablecloth, but I wasn't doing it. I wasn't skipping onto her table. I was skipping onto the tables just beside them. So what was coming oh, in was great. much softer. And then when you come in here, I'd put in like, a large frame just close or just off. Often I try and keep stuff off the floor, especially if it's actors moving on the floor and they want to sort of have that space, like you probably know that. But at the same time with this, because some of it's so controlled and this was like, we were definitely going to be here and we were short siding a lot. You know, I could bring frames quite close to keep it real, real soft. And Emerald was an actor, I'm sure you're used to like going, I'm not in control of when we shoot some important scene, but are you still sensitive to like, 
arcing an actor's story and giving them a little chance to find the character. Because I always find you could plan everything you want. You could have everything buttoned up. But until you get the actor in front of the camera, you're you're really discovering the movie as you make it for the first you know couple of days or weeks, whatever it takes. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think, I mean, ideally you, you shoot as chronologically as possible. The only thing we could do for this movie was save the last 20 minutes, the location of the last 20, 25 minutes of the movie till the end. So we shot that in the last week. Um, that was really the most important thing because that's the, that's the most intense performing and the most difficult stuff I think for me. so yeah but apart from that really we were dictated to by locations and I think we did choose Jar the first day because we felt it was bad it was controllable it's a long scene it's a meaty scene but as Ben says it's static it was something we could plan and I think so much about it especially if it's your first film and you're British and really pregnant and you know somewhat of an idiot you need that first day to go really well. Because yeah. everyone, no, but you don't want anyone in the crew going home. I mean, I'm sure some did. You don't want anyone going home going, oh, fuck, this is. <laughs> it's, the, it's the driver again. Yeah, it's like, yeah the driver. And so we were just like, that first day, we were just meticulous, obsessive. And then, and then we kind of could allow ourselves. I remember the end of that day was like, we're okay. <laughs> I had a director I worked with who said, He's like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to shoot one take and we're moving on. I don't care what it is. And he set up a shot just for that purpose of like making a point to be like, not even like, and this is back in the film days, not even like one for like, you know, safety. Like, you know, it was just like, we got it moving on. And it was like, just so like everyone was like, wait, this is how it's going to be. We're not going to do 50 takes, you know? And so it was pretty funny. Because I think even I was like, I don't know. It wasn't that great. He's like, don't worry about it. We'll, just, we'll do it anyway. <laughs> Everyone gets off, yeah, yeah, yeah. The philosophy of that, yeah. The other thing that's the thing here is on the first day, because it's also the first time we, I mean, we had done like a day together in London or whatever, but it was like a whatever. And like, the other thing here that you have to remember is, you know, and we discussed all this stuff for weeks and weeks. You've got it all in your head and you know what it's like. You work with a director for the first time. This is the first time you're kind of in the trenches. And we discussed form and short siding and certain things. And I do remember like quite, Specifically, I don't know if we set up the shot on Madison. It's quite like short-sighted. And I was half thinking like, and I remember you came over and you went, well, if we're going to put her on the on the like right of frame, why don't you just put her like right on the right of frame? And I was like, then I knew we were making like the same movie. You know what I mean? As in like Emerald would kind of push it even further at points into like a great, you know, it was like now we're, there wasn't like, it wasn't like, let's go stay or let's do this. It was like, this is what we're trying to make. You know what I mean? And we're both quite honest. I mean, I think probably also, I think partly because we're both British, like uh, we could, we were both quite mean, I think probably quite mean to each other from kind of the outside, <laughs> in that we were just, we were able to communicate in a quite a direct way. And I think, I hope that was like, sometimes it was like, whoa. Especially if we didn't like something, yeah. Or so what, give me an example. Do you know an example? Like, there's got to be a time when you're like, I don't think this is working or like, this sucks. What, let's try something different. Totally. I'm just trying to think of like a good example. Oh, it would usually be like, it would be one or the other thing. It would be like, I would say, can we do this incredibly hideous, gaudy thing? And Ben would say, that's gaudy and hideous. <laughs> but to talk about like an, an example, let's just go, down, just go down one and go to the one where she's in the cafe. Where it's just her and uh, oh, this the one this. that's like the Madonna, yeah, the, which is an amazing. Yeah. It's one of the best parts of the movie. But this was one where an Emerald was very specific about this. We're going to shoot this against this. So you're a DP, so this is it. You're going to shoot this against a white wall, uh, and this is where the kiss is going to happen. And she's going to stand right by the white wall. And I was like, oh my god. I mean, we have to get some distance between her. I can't say, or we have to get lights <laughs> in, or do like backlight, or. I need to make it beautiful. And it was really like a really good example of where you need to kind of sometimes you throw that sort of what is the you know, the 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 I the perfect on paper idea of dimension or whatever, because this is about something else or the graphicness of it or even just having a soft front light. It was just a point. I think that was a point where I had to come round. I'm sure you talked me round to it because I said can we pull her away or whatever? And you were just like, Ben, no, we're going to shoot her straight on. 
So we had this kind of like to and fro for about five minutes, if we were four. <laughs> I was like, but of course, the inverse of that happened too, where I would push for something and then we do it. A, a good example would be so a similar thing with the first shot of Cassie on the red bonquette. Um, I love that you think that word's so funny. I don't know what else you call it. Ben? A banquette. <laughs> Yeah, but she would always say bonquette. This is the bonquette. <laughs> but so, but so for this one, I kind of pushed Ben like in a very argumentative, bossy, annoying way to really overlight it. So it was really stark. So it was like almost like a Jurgen Teller kind of thing. And look, and he was like, "It's not gonna work." Blah, blah, blah. And he was absolutely right. You know, we got it in the edit, and it looked fucking sublime if it had been in a you know, in W Magazine or Vogue, but it wasn't, it just stuck out. It, it took you, it did the opposite of what, you know, it's supposed to do, it just took you out. Oh, very so interesting. There were, so there are tons of, I think it was always a to and fro and, and um, but we, we were always trying to be generous with each other and letting, you know, cause you know, sometimes I would have really terrible ideas. Mostly it was me having the terrible ideas. Um, but we kind of would give each other the space to do it, I think. And it was important because it meant we did make something that isn't quite as straightforward, I think. It's, I mean, it just, it's- No, it it's like, I, I, I always think of like that image you described, the one, you know, this one here. I mean, a lot of these images, these images are going to be referenced in other people's decks for many. Well, many that one I love. I love that one. This was my. This was the David Lynch, the sort of like, yeah. you know, wild at heart. I somehow had this that, but you know, they're watching the TV. The parents are watching TV during the day, and it's like coming onto the wall. Ben did one of um, the Shining, the blowjob in the Shining. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Even just oh, the Shining is obviously like a, a, a like a huge you know, reference of just, you know, center frame sort of, re you know, those kind of things. But this kind of frame within a frame elements that you guys did in this home. Oh, yeah, I love that. Did you find the home and then start going, this is great, this has all, or did you try to look for a home that had some of these sort of shoot through things? Because this home had the greatest little center frame, frame within a frame moments that I just really appreciated. I mean, getting the house right was like really important. That house was so long. It had that amazing way to shoot from the living room through the hallway, through the dining room, into the kitchen. You know what I mean? And I remember, I think that was something we both were either sitting in the living room or were you sitting on that seat? And I just remember we looked at that seat and I was like, that should be where Cassie sits. Because also you're trying to single, you're trying to give the weight in that way we're trying to single her out and it was just kind of perfect in that way yeah where she meets her parents against this always an island they all sit in the same like we all do at home the house we chose because it's the most feminine hepto bismol kind of dream house <laughs> but it, it but what's so great about those little you know the bits we're talking about it's it gives it that doll's house quality right that sort of slightly yeah. unreal slightly uncanniness which always feels kind of feminine to me even though i know that it, that's not necessarily true or even yeah we have we have limited time but i want to talk about shooting at dusk because oh, no. this i every movie i've ever done we have some moment where we shoot at dusk and i i just want to hear from both of you because it has a s different stress for one party and obviously the director has to buy in because it's a limited time but you tell me a little bit about this little scene in which she confront like he's waiting for her at her home and she's you know and 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 it's obviously shot in a very small window i mean from a technical point of view this was uh i mean i love shooting at dusk as well this is something that even in the film like beast the film i did previous we shot a very key scene all at dusk in 40 minutes and it worked really really well and i think digital works so well at dusk in the blue hour when it's like the last bit of light so I'm always trying to get what in, but usually I'm trying to read the page going like, is this quarter of a page going to work at dusk? Is this going to work at dusk? Is this? And I was like, then we're like, this scene will work at dusk. And we were like, okay, we're definitely going to do it. We'll schedule it before lunch. It was a split day. We're going to go into the car afterwards. And I just remember going, right, we'll definitely get it. And technically that was fine. We started it off. It actually went pretty, pretty well. We shot the whole thing. The widest shot there. We actually shot two singles. And then just as we finished and we're about to cut for lunch, I remember, and Kerry came up to me and she said, I want to go again. And Kerry is not, Kerry's like one of the no, most no. wonderful actresses to work with. She's never going to, she's, ne you know what I mean? So when, if she says that, I'm like, she wants to go again, not, you know, because she really needs to. 
you know what I mean? And I was like, never going to say no. I was like, of course. So then it was like, all right, we're going to go for lunch. And I was just like, shit, what are we going to do? We have to light. So basically lighting night for day. This one. This is night for day and a bold sort of night for day. Because so we had to do quite a lot in post. We had to match. The yeah, one. this, the sky, the sky you had to map, put in or whatever, which was Got a it. savior. But And this? Really? Uh, no, no, that was before lunch. Yeah, that's the last take of before lunch. That was, and then we kind of did a little bit in the grade. We made her face... So to kind of make that transition work. Sure. It, yeah, know. yeah. But this is beautiful. But I really like this. So this is a really interesting. Again, it really started to create. Then I was like freaked out. How are we going to do that? And actually it was John the gaffer because we had a condor with a 20 by and he was like, I'll bring it round. And we just bounced the lights right. into it. Like two 18s. Yeah. We tried to fill it and all that stuff. I had like street lights down here. But it's actually, again, what ends up happening then is you start looking at it and it's like, this is, you get that magical realist qual like not really you just get a magical quality the, again it's the fairy tale idea or the you know what i mean and it re i actually really like it i think thought like i think i read somewhere that jonathan glazer wanted to shoot a whole movie like night for day and i can see why because you'd get this very odd feeling do you know what i mean and it, it would of, be like a gregory crutzen photo where it's like yeah, this yeah, incredibly with, controlled sort of like lit night you know world and it is this like I mean, on the day, that was a that was a really tough day because we would it was a split and we had to then do that. So after this, we had to get was it the car? Yeah, we had to get in the car and do the Uber scene. That scene is when she's tweaked out of her mind and she needs to like get into a nightclub. It's the time we see her like she needs to get out, out, out. So it worked because we were all tweaked as hell. <laughs> we were all just like, no, it's true, it's true. And the bit where she walks off and goes into this, I think we had some like park hands and she like walks straight towards them or whatever. It kind of has that amazing. Yeah. But like, let me ask, as from a directing side and somebody who's obviously acted, do you prep them in a different kind of way? Like, did Carrie know, like, okay, this is gonna be a small window, we're gonna have to do this kind of tight and and when she asked for that another take, did she understand the implications or not so much? Look, the thing, I think, honestly, actors are often treated with kid gloves. I say this as an actress myself, and I, they don't need to be, and it's not helpful. There's no need to have conversations for hours on set about motivations and stuff. If you're not there, you're not there. It's prote For me, it's pretending. That stuff is just, it is pushing forward to the inevitable. It's just people are anxious and they don't, sure. want to, they don't want to do it. So like, there's that side of stuff. But the thing is with everyone on this movie, particularly Carrie, is she's so clever. She's so part of the team. She never left set. She was never in her trailer. She was never on her phone. She was there. She was she was her own stand in whenever she could be. So she was, she's acutely aware. But I think again, it's just, there's a filter, I suppose, in casting. If you sense somebody's going to be tricky and need a lot of managing, this kind of movie isn't going to be possible for them because there's just no time. And that goes for anyone, any HOD, really, any person. And for me, yeah, it's just about being straightforward. If if somebody was, if if we were losing time and it was like this, I mean, I think, I don't know, Ben would probably agree, I would be my most headmistressy. I'd just say, what the fuck we do? No, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, we had to go. I mean, they they knew though. I remember we had a discussion before because it is every time you shoot dust, it's the time. Yeah, as a head of department, you come, you become most like kind of shouty if you like. You know what I mean? It's where you're kind of just because you're trying to get it all done. You know, you're trying to get it all in. But I th I knew no. That's why I had zero. I mean, I literally when the minute Carrie said it, I was like, we're we'll definitely work out a way to do that because I knew she was coming from a place where she just she want the performance for her wasn't yeah. there. You know. She would never do that out of there, uh, yeah. But they did only get one take. That was it. They had one take and it wasn't enough. And she was yeah. right. We tried. We tried it on and we did as much as we could do. But she, yeah, she was... I, I think we would have probably had to have done it anyway, or at least I'm glad we did. Cause... <laughs> I mean, I did a thing where we planned this whole scene and on Joker and we're ready. It's going to be a 10-minute window. We have to do basically four setups in 10 minutes. We have it all marked out. And uh, God bless, craft service brought out all these tacos. So everyone <laughs> took breaks to eat. And I Not went, good. I went actually crazy. I went so crazy. They made shirts for me with a big taco and a thing through it. Cause I went crazy. I went, no, 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 no. Just in 10 minutes, we can eat every taco you want. It'll all be over. But for 10 it's minutes, please just put the tacos back in the truck. Hitting them out of people's mouths. Like, get it. 
It is. Well, when Ben said like, that's when you get your most shouty, yeah, I know exactly what he means. Yeah, exactly. But I think if you're lucky and you have a set where everyone in general gets on really well and, and works really hard, which we absolutely had, actually that's not a bad thing because if Ben ever got short, you'd know it was serious. Like he was never, ever, ever like that. It's so funny and delightful. But if he was ever stressed, you knew we were like kind of against it. Well, that's useful for me. If you shout all the time, you need to shout. Yeah, you like, don't know. You don't know. When the tacos come, I, you shout. I go Phil Scott. If, if it comes out Phil Scottish, you know that's yeah, like, like that's trouble. right. That's what? right. <laughs> when the bad like, What's come out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, listen. I could go through every shot in the movie and have this conversation, but you guys have been lovely, and I learned a mess. And- like I said, I enjoyed the movie immensely watching it for the first time, just as a, as you would expect as an audience member, just diving in headfirst into this weird ride that took me in places I didn't expect. And then I really enjoyed watching it another time to understand all those decisions, like you said, that both you guys made every single image has such so much thought behind it that kudos to you guys for the craftsmanship. And I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having us here, yeah. Yeah, and thank you for doing Shot Deck because it's absolutely incredible. It's incredible. <laughs> well, like I said, it's it's it was fun to put this on here. I'm excited to have it represented on the site. And um, like I said, I'll be putting it in decks. It'll be in decks for color and framing for me for a long time in the, in the future, yeah. Lawrence, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Good luck Sunday, yeah. Lately, I've been feeling like I might want to get back into it.